Welcome to the Business Clicks podcast, the podcast that interviews business owners to discuss their struggles, strategies, and successes with using the power of the internet to grow their business. We discuss the transition from brick and mortar growth strategies to digital alternatives. We provide new and exciting tactics each business can use to be successful in this new digital world. I'm your host, Adam Barbro, and let's get stuck in. Okay, welcome to episode one. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we have Richard Dixon from Connects Realty. Uh, yeah, g'day. Rich is here actually over the phone thanks to the current COVID lockdown that has re- made sure that we've been back working from home or in restricted spaces. And before we get started, Richard, Richard, I wanted to ask you, what is one thing that you believe that will make a successful business in the years to come? I think what will make a successful business, that's a very interesting question because I haven't given that a whole lot of thought. But, you know, being a small business person myself, I think that's uh, one of the things that will um, will benefit uh, a, a small successful business would be obviously their digital marketing. Digital marketing. I would have to agree with you for that. I'm, I didn't even put him up to say that. That's just what he said. <laughs> <laughs> but I basically... Yeah. Go ahead, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, but but I mean, talk to, talk to me a bit about that. Like, why, what made you say that straight off the bat? Well, it's, oh, obviously, it's one of the topics that we we, we are is always always talking about these days as real estate agents. When I very first started in real estate, um, it it was basically the shop window and a new, the local newspaper. That was the, the, the two main forms of advertising. Uh, and, of course, word of mouth, which is something us, uh, us real estate agents rely quite heavily on, even, even in this current, current day and age. But uh, as things have developed, you, you, I'm blown away by how we can um, get our message out there as, as real estate uh, agents um, through the uh, so, uh, social media, um, uh, through the internet, like what we're doing now, podcasts, um, videos. We we use video a lot in our in in, in our presentations uh, of properties. Certainly through the internet. Um, one of the things that we at Connect Realty um, got ahead of was the virtual inspections. So. We were we were fine tuning virtual inspections uh, a couple of months prior to the pandemic breaking out. So just by chance, we were ready to hit the ground running uh, when they turned around and said, "Hey, no more inspections uh, for real estate agents. No more open homes." We uh, we had uh, we had our videos lined up and and away we went. That's really curious. Is there a, is there a reason why you actually before COVID? What made you what what prompted that? What made you think, hey, virtual inspections would be a good idea? Was that just a bit of a forethought in terms of seeing well, how well, people are reacting and wanting to come to actual um, viewing properties? Well, what I what I what I've learned is that, um, and I'm not by no stretch of the imagination a a, a digital person, um, you know, we've all the the marketing techniques that uh, that we have uh, these days, um, you know. I, but I've learned I've learned to grow with it. And uh, one of the things that uh, that that I've realised is that well, look, you know, we go online and we we we, we watch videos of, of products being sold. Well, our products no different. We just get it online and put it out there to the world. Yeah, definitely makes sense, and I think I think that's that's something which takes is 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 very easy when someone says it. Oh, yeah, we were doing that beforehand, but I don't think too many businesses are able to sort of stop and look at uh, customer behavior behavior like that and look at where attention is and then say, hey, we could do the same. I think that's probably that's a quite a unique way of looking at things, to be honest. Yeah, look, uh, I just think that you need to, to to be innovative. You need, you know, people say you know about reinventing the wheel. Well. Um, the reality is uh, we're always trying to reinvent the wheel for it to run smoother, more efficiently. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I tried to reinvent the wheel. 
Yeah. Do you reckon, is, is there something in your background, your past? Is there other past jobs or previous businesses or anything that made you that made you think like that, that made you, you think, developed that sort of keen sense of looking where people are spending their time and attention that helped with you doing that? Or do you think it's something um, that just by comes from looking at your business in a holistic way? Yeah, um, it was a combination, really. Uh, I just found that, you know, my buying habits, uh, you know, traditionally we'd hop in the car on a, uh, on a Saturday morning, we'd go down the shops, uh, do our shopping and, you know, look through the windows of the shops. And uh, and it was, you know, just the, the fact that, you know, that this whole revolution of internet shopping um, just triggered the thought process of, well, what can we do? You know, how can we, you know, stay ahead of the crowd? What can we do to, to stand out from the crowd? And, um, you know, as, as real estate agents, uh, show, show ourselves as a, as a uh, you know, a, a leader. Yeah, which is really interesting, obviously, because we've had, obviously, conversations in the past and we've talked about um, other ways that you could do it. One is the very mean that we're using right now. And it's it's quite yes. interesting talking to you and, and seeing that sense of uh, looking forward and being able to look for new interesting techniques. Because, I mean, we've seen these days websites like realestate.com and Domain really taking over the ability to share and viewers actually looking at these properties um, online digitally and basically making their purchasing habits even if we're talking about a million dollar property through a phone, right? And that's what you talked about in terms of, you know, photos and videos and being able to get them through the door that way. So it's interesting that you're then now looking at it, looking at it as a product, just like any other product, which I think is, I think not too many people do regardless of what industry they're in. Yeah. So what, one of the things that, that we try, try to do is drive the traffic to our website, connectrealty.com.au. And the reason for that it is because we don't want the, uh, our customers obviously looking at the other shop windows. <laughs> you know, they want, we want them looking at ours. And if we can make it interesting, um, then, uh, you know, we can retain, uh, I suppose, that, that, uh, that customer base and, and continually uh, driving traffic to, to our website. One of, the, my, one of the things that we've recently done is that uh, we have um, uh, developed calculators. So on our on our website, uh, we have uh, calculators for calculating stamp duty, um, calculating costs of purchasing a property. A lot of people, you know, who are looking for their first home or their first investment, they, they don't fully understand, you know, what, well, most of them don't, don't understand uh, the, the full extent of the, the cost of getting themselves into that position of uh, having their first home or investment. Yeah, uh, I, that that's really interesting to me because I think I think a lot of the times we, you know, rely on other people showing showing tools already. And one of the most primary marketing techniques you can um, techniques you can use is getting people onto your website, so it becomes traffic that you're able to control which I think is you know, the, the main purpose behind things like Google Ads and Facebook Ads is to make sure that you're able to control where that traffic is going. So it's interesting that you're doing, or, doing that already and not just relying on platforms like realestate.com. Is, do you have certain strategies that you're implementing at the moment that make that a bit, bit more of a funnel, a bit more of a smoother customer journey for your customers to, to get them onto your website? Yeah, so we use, um, we use it, uh, the other social media platforms um, we use Instagram, uh, we use uh, Facebook, and uh, one of the things that we, we have on, on Facebook is uh, a VIP um, page where you can, uh, as a, a property seeker, uh, you can register on our Connect Realty VIP page and you will get a uh a preview of the properties that are about to come to the market. Yeah, right. And that, and those links are then leading them on back to your website. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so the, the the whole the whole the whole purpose is to drive as much traffic to uh, connectrealty.com.au as possible. Yeah, I'm curious because that's. I mean, this is really this is all really good stuff, right? This is how, this is how we would teach sort of any business to start sort of pushing traffic towards their website 
and the fact that you're doing these already well, is really good. But do you have any do you have any troubles, or have you had any sort of maybe specific wins, or anything that really stands out of that's made that difficult or made that easier? No, look. Um, to be honest with you, um, just just thinking about you know, I mean, I've got a great team behind me. Um, they, they're just outstanding. And so uh, everyone who works in Connect Realty, they have the same uh, thought process, uh, which makes it very easy. So you know, we're, we're all on the bus together. Um, and uh, when you have that. I suppose that synergy, it makes life so much easier. Yeah, of course. Having a good team that are all on the same path, I think, yeah, is, yeah. is no different from saying uh, I'm taking a bit of a steps to make sure that you have the right customers. You also need to make sure that you have the right team that are going after the right, going after things the correct way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, having you know been been in the industry for. Mm, well, my, my my love affair with real estate actually started in 1987. That was when I, I bought my first my first first home. Um, it was a one bedroom flat in East London, and uh, it um, it really was um, it, it was a beautiful little home to be honest with you. Um, great location, and uh, the, the thing about uh, buying real estate is that I think that uh, you put you'd have to put location at the top of your list. Yeah, of course. Common saying: the location, location, location. And it's usually, and Correct. I think that's yes. probably made even even more so of a factor now that these, as as we're talking about, you know, these social media apps and the apps like um, the property show, showcasing apps like real estate and um, domain and stuff. Most people first thing they do is sort by area. They know the area they want to go in and they and they go look at properties in those areas, which probably, yes. you know, makes that makes that whole process of pushing location first, particularly in the real estate world, now even, you know, more more extreme because of those reasons. Do you find that to be the yes. case? Yes, yes, yes. So um the I suppose the the benefit uh to uh you know Having that thought process is straight away. You're by by choosing the right location, the rest of your lifestyle will just drop into place. Yes, I think that's a common common thought. I'm curious now that you said that. Does that now does that often impact how you do your marketing for these properties? Well, um, it it does um, to a degree. Uh, but we kind of have like um, a system where you know we we have these processes that 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 when we're dealing with uh, a particular type of property, um, we we can implement it uh, so that it's molded to benefit each individual vendor. Yes. And uh, is is that more on a digital front? Is that or is that the messaging? Is that the photos? Like, wh how are you how are you molding it to suits? Yeah. That? So yeah, you're you're hitting the nail on the head. At the end of the day, right here and now, everybody should be looking at the digital side of things. And um, whilst you know, the marketing is not just the the, the I suppose the the only thing you should be thinking about, uh, obviously, you know, developing your sales skills as well um, is very important. Yes, definitely. I think it's a whole – it's always the whole system, right? And I think if, if you're missing little components of your business in that sense, if you're missing the right systems or you're missing the sales parts, the marketing becomes almost in many ways ineffective because you still yeah. need to finish finish the marketing by having a sale – by closing with the deal – for that for that process to be complete, and I think it depends on the business, but I think you know there's usually a step missing in the process if businesses aren't getting the uh, work they're looking for because they might have a great sales funnel, they might have great yeah. you know digital content. By the sounds of it, you're doing that really well with um, content and messaging and everything, and on the right platforms to get people to your website. But if you're a business that then didn't couldn't 
finish the sale correctly, then it sort of comes to nothing and you sort of need to have that full package to be able to have a, have a successful business and take real advantage of the digital and online uh, side of marketing. Yeah, well, it's a rolling process as well. So, you know, you're, you're, you're right. It, once, you, once you complete a sale, you're, you're, you're very often either in the middle of, uh, uh, of uh, prospecting for your next, next opportunity uh, so it just rolls on and on and on. And, you know, if you've got good good tools, uh, like, you know, like, say, just the CRM, for, 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 for instance, if you've got a good CRM, away you go. Um, and then all the rest just falls into line. Yeah, do you have any... I guess, I mean, obviously you've been in business a long time, so things like building up an email list on your CRM over a period makes that easy because that's something that does usually take time or will require Facebook advertising and things like that to be able to gather those leads. Are there any specific components that you had difficulties when making those more transition to online sources and to social media that really, you know, caused a bit of a headache for you? Yeah. Look, I mean, certainly, I certainly have had challenges. Um, because I was very much a hands-on person. Uh, when I very first started uh, selling real estate, and we're, we're going back some 20 years now, uh, I walked into my first real estate office and they said, there's your desk, there's a, a, a phone, a piece of paper and a pen, um, start prospecting. Uh, no training, no nothing, um, and... Uh, Cold calling. Don't ask me how, but it was a sink or swim situation, and uh, I, I, sw- I swam like mad. And what, what, what did you think that you learned the mat? What was the biggest learning point from doing that? Do you reckon? Do you reckon it was how you talk to people? Yeah. Do you reckon it was the messaging? Do you reckon it was how you structure conversations? Where, where do you think you found the gold in, in doing those? The, the, the biggest thing I learned was how not to treat staff and how not to treat people. Yep. Yep. It was it was a it was an, an enormous eye opener for me. Um, that that business is long gone broke, um, and uh, <laughs> it certainly doesn't surprise me. But um, you know, I, I I cut my teeth there, and I was grateful for the opportunity. Uh, and uh, and then I, I I moved on and, and worked for one of the the larger, more organised. Uh, real estate groups. Yeah, I think I, I think it's funny that you say that, right? I think it's interesting that a lot of these. I, I found that a lot of the same topics that people like to talk about and be like, "Oh, that's actually," you know, I wouldn't discount that, although it's something that people mention all the time, such as how you treat people and how that affects business success. It's something that mm. people say, you know, the books "How to Win Friends and Influence People," you know, hugely millions of copies sold around the world, so it's a very common book. And yet, how often do people actually implement those basic learnings of treating people well? You know, doing. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting you should uh, mention that book because um, I was never never much of a book reader, uh, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, there was a couple of books that I read when I was growing up, which I I, I took great interest in. Um, but the first first, like I suppose, professional development book that I ever read was that book. Uh, by Dale Carnegie, yeah. and um, you know, I uh, it was actually a very, very helpful book for me because um, it 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 taught me one one thing, and that and that is um, that uh, it was it was much easier um, to be a salesman by by say less is more by saying nothing when you could quite easily say quite a lot. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I look at that and I, I, I just say, I think it's one of those things where you start learning something about a topic and you you know, you know feel like you have to get more complex and more detailed until you get to the stage where you learn all those more complex, more detailed things and realize that the basic fundamentals worked better than the more detailed, you know, complex ways of doing things, ways of, more complex ways of marketing and, you know, more complex ways of doing sales, more complex ways of building relationships i think yeah. i always find you go back to the foundations and all of a sudden things work so much better yeah you, whilst whilst you know life has become more complicated um by keeping it simple even though you know these i suppose these programs these software programs can be 
overwhelming and you feel like you're you're spending way way more time um uh, you know in front of a screen um i try to manage my day so that you know i get quality uh quality time from using those those systems yeah definitely do you ever look at it i always look at it the difference between consuming and producing I try to make sure yes. that particularly for social media, I'm doing more producing than I am consuming. I'm probably not yes. very successful with that, but that that's always my goal. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a great great attitude to have. Um, uh, I've always been, you know, a very positive mind, m- m- you know, mindset. And uh, one of the things that uh, obviously I, 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 I realise is that, you know, that I had, I am sales orientated, so the things that I do well, I focus on, and the things that I don't do so well, I delegate. Definitely, definitely. I think, you know, just by having this conversation, obviously talking to you and knowing you previously, I think that you've got a very good sense, and it's probably come from both experience and having, I think, a bit of a business business, business owner's mind in the sense that you're looking for these opportunities, talking yes. about doing those uh, virtual walkthroughs of properties you know prior to covid is something that i didn't know you had done but i think is i think it just sort of exemplifies the type of thinking that you need to have in order to take full advantage of the digital world moving forward and i think a lot of business owners at this point in time are probably maybe not fully realizing or fully taking advantage of the point that we're in the ver- very early days of these systems you know controlling yeah. controlling our yeah. lives in many ways and being able to you know build audiences and build reputation and brand now is going to pay off tenfold in ten years' time. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, one of the things that um, you know, talking about digital marketing, uh, and obviously that's one of the one of the key subjects that we're we're, that we're focusing on today. Um, but I'd just like to go back um, when my children were tiny. Uh, we used to go to Skater Street Market in in the East End of London on a Sunday morning, and we would sell T-shirts. We'd stand there. And we'd scream our guts out, and my do- my little daughter, she was only two or three at the time, and we'd have a, we'd actually have a great time uh, selling these t-shirts. Well, with digital marketing these days, uh, you, you would you would be on you would be online. You would sell probably ten times what I would do in in the market. So you know, if, if you go through markets now, they they are no nothing like what they they once were, and and a lot of them have just disappeared because you can take a product like that, put it on your virtual shop, and and like I say, sell ten if not twenty times more product. Yeah, and I think I think it makes sense. But I think more the most important aspect of looking at that is is the sales happen because that's where the people's attention is. That's where people are spending their time. Not as like yeah. as you just said, not as many people are going to the markets. But what mm. are they doing? They're probably sitting at home on Facebook. So if, if you're there on Facebook, then you're going to make the sales not necessarily because it's digital, but because that's where people are spending their time. And if you're able to assess and look at the where the real opportunities are with people's attention, that's always where the I think the biggest gains are going to gains are going to occur. And that that yeah. might be a very obvious place, but it might be somewhere where your industry is not yet um, as 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 developed as other areas. <laughs> Well, we have started. We have started. We have started to develop in that that area, and I think uh, cars cars are a good example. You know, people are moving to to purchasing cars online without even actually sitting in them. Uh, and I think that you'll find that in, in years to come, the, the same way will happen with houses. Uh, I don't believe everyone will will move in that direction because, you know, a, a lot of people are, you know, um, uh, they like to, you know, tactile. They like to feel uh, feel it, touch it, see Experience it, it yeah. you know. Um, but you will get you will get an element of that that is, is purchased online. I, I think that, you know, in years to come, you'll, you'll have a building report online uh, you'll have the contract online. You'll have the you have the property online. Each each room virtually viewed, uh, and and I and I do believe that you know that that will happen. Um, whether 
you know, it happens in my lifetime or the next one I, is yet to be seen. But uh, I certainly think that there is um, a lot more, uh, I suppose, development to come uh, in the real estate industry. I've seen changes that I never thought I would see. You know, I never dreamt of uh, this um, this whole digital marketing side of real estate. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, I, I hear about people talk about how back in the day they looked at, you know, things like Facebook, things like even the internet as a fad, as something that wasn't going to go mainstream, wasn't going to push those boundaries. And I think that's only going to continue to develop. We see that now with things like cryptocurrency where people are like, oh, it's a fad. Yeah, it's a thing. I, I was shocked. I was absolutely yeah. shocked. I'm actually um, when, curious to know your opinion on whether you think um, how things like AR and VR, if they get to a point, do you think that's going to be a massive component of how you sell homes in the future? Um, look, uh, I think that, um, I think that it's limitless, to be honest with you. The, the, you know, the, 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 the uh, I'm struggling to find the words, but <laughs> I, the limit, there's no bounds, I think, to the way that we're going to be marketing in the future. I agree. And I, I usually put it in the sense that I think we're evolving past, you put it down to we're evolving past time and space and not in the mythical sense. I just mean in the sense that putting yourself down in a position where you have to talk to someone to make a sale, you're in a location and you're taking up time to do that. So you're in time and space. Mm. I think the more you move digitally, you're able to do things when you're not in, you can be anywhere in time and space and it's working for you. It's sort of like everything that we get told in terms of running a business with systems and doing things for your business rather than having to be in your business, I think is is where um, technology, particularly the internet, is making those biggest changes, which is why it's going to impact business more and more because it just means we have to spend less time doing these things in person. We can do like what we're doing now where having this conversation once, recording it, and yet it's going to be out there for people to listen to forever. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. I mean, it's just, uh, it's phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I just want to say thanks for um, joining us today, Richard. Um, I think it was really good that it's how been you... An absolute... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure, Adam. Uh, I um, it, It's a topic that is, I suppose, um, every, on the tip of everyone's tongue, and it was great to have a chat about it. Yeah, brilliant. I think you've. I'm really impressed with the sort of thinking and I think foresight that you show, particularly with Connect Realty, with bringing that value to the customers and doing things differently to be able to serve them in the way that they need to be served rather than what's currently done as industry standard, which I think is the difference between uh, maybe a institution like yours and and you know others that are out there. Yeah, uh, just uh, uh, on on the last note. Uh, we at Connect Realty do not do a cookie cutter exercise with our customers. We evaluate each one individually and address each customer's needs as they arise. Brilliant. And if someone's looking to um, use your services, particularly around the southeast Queensland region, um, where would you send them? Oh, straight to connectrealty.com.au or you can contact me directly on mobile 0403 780303. Okay, thank you very much and thank you for everyone for listening to Business Clicks. That concludes episode number one. Thanks, Adam. It's been a pleasure. I'm your host, Adam Barbro. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Business Clicks podcast. 